one of the team member from my team specifically from mobile development ios team was laid off and i was more scared because i was since i was on h1b let's do a quick intro for people who don't know anything about you where are you from where are you right now what do you do Uh, where do you live right now and all the fun stuff about you sure so hey guys i am akshay and uh, right now i'm working as a part of wicker team at amazon aws and i am from bikane rajasthan in india it's a very small city <laughs> and it's famous for its bujia in bikane <laughs> you bujia and uh, like sweets and uh, i came to us in 2016 and for my masters and i worked in india like for 2 years before that and uh, i graduated in uh, 2017 from stevens institute of technology as you did mentioned and uh, after that i am working in us like as a ios developer on multiple companies and and also like i learned android development meanwhile the process mm nice and currently i am living in boston a quick gre uh, score prof like your profile basically tofel bachelors etc sure Uh, I am not a genius guy. I am like an average person, and my GRE. We all are. Is... We all are. We all are. <laughs> this this whole UD squad community is like that. So go so, for it. So uh, my GRE was like three hundred and four, and my TOEFL was like eighty nine, and mm. uh, my bachelor's was like around six point six GPA. Yeah. And I had like lot of backlog, so while I was doing my bachelor's, so it was like hard time. A <laughs> lot of backlogs. How many? So I had like. around 10 to 12 backlogs like in like nice. starting from like first semester like okay and uh, for all the students who are watching uh, if you are a student and if you're worried about your backlogs uh, look at this person right here akshay like uh, he had 10 to 12 backlogs and after that also he made it to us and he made it to amazon as an ios engineer so so please don't worry about your backlogs right now just focus on 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 the main things you need to learn so yeah yeah definitely agree on that because like backlogs you can definitely work and clear it out and just focus on your skills and that's mm-hmm. the most important part don't lose hope so um obviously you chose stevens did you have any other admits or so i applied for like few universities like one in like few in california few in one is was utd and i got like admit like only from njit and stevens so over njit i picked stevens because like i had like heard the name of the university and it's quite good like because of the mis and all you chose business. stevens because of the view yeah view is <laughs> amazing over there like specifically the castle point view yeah and uh, it's priceless like the yeah. very first day when i landed at stevens i clicked the picture at that and posted on instagram i still remember yeah. that day. <laughs> yeah i know like, when i was on the campus everybody told me that they pay 10000 dollars extra in their fees just for this view <laughs> yes like they have a canon and uh, you can just watch whole style new york skyline right for people who haven't watched my campus tour video on stevens you should definitely check it out that's that that you will get a good idea of what the campus looks like and the city life and then all of that so you will you'll know more cool I, uh, best yeah. part about campus is like it gets more beautiful in snow like if uh, if it like mm. in winters it gets more beautiful like if it's specifically like in time of christmas they decorate uh, beautifully like christmas lighting and everything let's move on to the the cost of stevens everybody knows it's expensive so what what was your total cost uh, including living and everything so including living and everything like my cost of like stevens was like around 60 to 65k and uh, i got like a scholarship because i applied early so i got like around 4000 scholarship and i i think like it wasn't much but like i have heard like people even got like around 8000 dollars scholarship mm-hmm. like uh, when like but students definitely want you to like apply earlier so that like uh, only then they will consider you for scholarship and you don't have to apply you will get directly automatically based on the profile and everything and is that 4000 per semester or is it just 4000 yes, over in total in oh total. so out of 60000 it's just 4000 yeah. so it's yeah. 56 yeah okay. 
and and you mentioned like your overall cost is 60 to 62 does that include your living expenses and all of that or just the yeah. fees yeah including the living because like i was living with my friends so that saved a lot of expense like when it comes to living and all that kind of stuff and also like i got like opportunity for like a, a ta like teaching assistant mm. in my college that also like covered some of the cost and that was also helpful Got it. Just curious. You don't have to answer it if you don't feel comfortable, but uh, did you take a loan uh, for this uh, education? Yeah. yeah, I took like education loan from India and uh, I am able to pay it off like last year. Oh, month. wow. Nice. I was, that was, was going to be my follow up question. Like if you were, if you are on the path to pay it off or if you have already paid it off and looks like you did yeah. pay it off. Uh, Nice. And, and I know there's an offline topic we, we've been discussing. Uh, Akshay is married to a beautiful uh, person and uh, she she's also actually doing her master's now and you're sponsoring her education as well, right? Yep. That is- I'm sponsoring my wife's uh, master's from Northeastern University. She's doing her master's in project management. Nice. And, uh, I'm helping, uh, not helping, I am like sponsoring her education. Nice. That's awesome. So it's a, so obviously you paid off your 60,000 plus her masters. I mean, Northeastern is not cheap, so it's yeah. another $50,000. So, yeah. so yeah, that's awesome. And the reason I asked this question is to kind of uh, give the uh, perspective to students and parents like who are watching that it is, it is a big amount you're taking as a loan, but it is possible to pay it off even you know, within the three year of OPT time frame, like, I mean, I mean, you graduated 2017 and you paid it off uh, within three years. So it is possible. And of course, it's not just paying off, but he also have savings and he's now, you know, sponsoring her wife, uh, his wife education. So the sky's the limit if you know how to manage your money. And, mm-hmm. and that's the reason I usually ask this question so that people give get that confidence and understanding that it is possible even though yeah. the fees are high i agree and also like uh, when i was like uh, working on opt i like many of the students didn't knew that like on opt you can like definitely like waive like taxes for like uh, so, uh, social and medicare like mm, yeah students don't know that that will be like additional saving on your earning and income that you can definitely do it yeah so when you do when you are on OPT, even on CPT, if people do yeah. CPTs, uh, um, there's a W-4 form which you will have to fill up as soon as you join uh, any company because that's your tax form, which kind of tells your company how much tax they have to deduct from your salary. And uh, in that, uh, typically they also charge for Medicare and Social Security tax. Uh, yeah. You do have to pay state tax and federal tax unless you are in a state free tax. Uh, but uh, in California, you have to pay both. Uh, so there's like those four. And then uh, if you are enrolled into uh, insurance and 401k, so those money will also get deducted. But yeah, uh, in general, you you don't have to pay Social Security and Medicare. And that's roughly, I think, 7 to 12 percent. I don't remember yeah. how much. Uh, so you will save that money. Yeah. Yeah, that's like also additional saving to help you off, like pay off the loans and everything. So like if students are scared, then don't be scared, like you save a lot. Absolutely. Let's uh, move on. So how did you, because it was, so you started your journey as a mobile developer in India, but then came here into software development. Did you stick, like, did you keep practicing or building apps in in iOS uh, that you stick with this industry or how did you started looking for job? Like what was your job, like kind of strategy, career strategy that you want to get, you want to stay into that iOS industry? So initially when I started my master's, my strategy wasn't like just to go for iOS job. Right. So, because like since my major was like software engineering. So I started like learning Python and like started developing like skills, like web skills and backend development skills. So I started applying for general software engineering role and uh, that strategy didn't work for me because like my experience was in iOS development and uh, I didn't had like proper work experience like in like Python and backend web development. So I had to refocus my strategy to like my strength, like the iOS development and my professor helped me a lot 
and he referred me like to a local like a uh, application development like a person like who was looking for iOS developer and mm-hmm. he referred me and i got like a freelance opportunity from there as well i worked with him like for like around like 2 and 2 years like as a lead developer on the application and and the good thing is like it was like a startup we were like only four people like in the team and it was an amazing experience working at that mm-hmm. and that's where i realized like i should fo- stick to my core strength rather than like going to uh, being like a jack of all trades kind of thing right like, because i was trying to learn other d- parts because like in tech world like if you don't learn and keep updated you are left behind yeah yeah so th- is that was that your first job like first official full time job no it was like a kind of freelance work like but i started as a freelancer but then i completely became like a part of that startup like and then i was focused and giving like my time like apart from my full time to oh yeah oh wow so you were doing like two jobs kind of I yeah. mean, in a way yeah yeah but yeah. not like a full time because it was just like a part time like a startup volunteer yeah like few was, hours wo- yeah yeah a few hours work and that helped me like while i was doing my masters to like build my portfolio and like give me another thing to add on my resume yeah and also like the professor was very helpful so he also he referred me because he knew that i have like experience in ios development and i did my capstone project on like uh, ios development application as well so he referred me and i love the part where you also you mentioned about how your professor ref- referred you and recommended you to get into ios and made you in contact with that how did that like how what did you tell him like how did you approach that professor or what's the story behind that so actually uh, that was like the agile professor uh, i can definitely say like professor jim roland he i think uh, i believe like as far as i remember he uh, retired from the school he's mm. not in the school right now but he was very helpful and he was my agile professor and uh, he helped me throughout my stevens journey and uh, i was like very communicative to him and i usually go to him like for every like python help or like any development software help so he used to help me a lot and uh, he know that i am a software ios application guy so mm-hmm. one of his coworker who whose friend was looking for ios developer and uh, he s- told uh, that friend and that that friend talked to the professor that we are looking for ios developer and the professor knew that i used to develop an application and he like we used to communicate a lot so we had like a good relationship when it comes to like a connection and uh, mm. so he directly had my name first in thing in his mind and he directly referred me without even asking or anything like that yeah this and, is awesome it's a true example why professor building relationship works yeah. uh, because i i've said it so many times in my videos and and you know you this is a true testimony of that that yeah. uh, that's how job market works over here like if let's say if there's a program manager position open up in amazon and and i'm looking at it and i'm like hey i know akshay works for amazon and i'm like hey do you know anybody who hi- is is hiring for this and yeah. he can look up and he's like yeah i know actually know the boss who's going to hire you <laughs> so yeah. and then that's how the connection works and you know but i think the people really people understand the importance of it but they don't know how to actually get started with building the conversation okay. building the relationship uh, so how did you started building the relationship with professor with the obviously you did not have the intention that this professor is actually going to give me a job but more like you just really wanted the help yeah. and build a genuine relationship with the professor so how yeah. did you like first kind of got into and build that relationship and how would you advise students to start that process so like i how i started was like a uh, professor was like my advisor as well like in the university so mm-hmm. i had to like uh, talk to him like about my uh, courses which i want to take like as elective and i want to like plan my uh, like curriculum throughout the student so we started like that and uh, the co- uh, i took agile like in my first semester and agile had like a python uh, cl- uh, assignments 
So I started learning Python and professor was really good at Python development because his background was in Python and uh, he then I used to talk to him about like how I can improve myself. He but when you say me. talk to him, like would you go to like office hours? Yeah, or? office hours like and like e first I used to email him and uh, that, uh, like before like going. So, but then he said like you can come anytime I'm available from this time to this time. And uh, just come here, like if I'm available here, we can talk and, and uh, if not, then definitely like wait here, like because they used to have like an office where you can wait and you can talk to the professor and, and he usually like go for classes, then you know, like what time they are available on which days they mm -hmm. can share the schedule and uh, professor uh, told me that you can come directly. So I used to go in his office, talk to him over there and like ask about like what I can do to improve my Python development because I was new at that time at, with the Python. Yeah. So he, he used to share like the PDFs and like gives like tips, like you can use the strings like this, you can start with like string manipulation and all those tips. And by the time like uh, though, throughout these conversations and throughout the course, like which I took with him like agile. So we had that kind of, we build up that bond, like just like daily conversation, like about the career and how things are going on like in my curriculum and his and how his classes are going on and also like when he was like taking like uh, agile course he offered me the same ta position like because it was he didn't had ta position before that mm. it was the first time he, he started just, ta yeah. position that's and awesome since he we had like a good uh, uh, connection and communication he directly offered me i was the first person who off, who he offered the position like for the uh, and the TA job and I took it and he relied uh, I was doing like all the grading and all that stuff so he was happy with my work and so like I, the only tip I, uh, I can give like to the people is like don't hesitate to communicate with the professor yes. or your advisor talk to them if you have any problem just email if you like hesitate email them like before like going to communicate so that will like uh, uh, take away your hesitation that you're not going to disturb the professor or anything professor are there to like help you in your journey mm -hmm. and they will be like available all the time if because like and that's like the professor want like their student to succeed in their life so yeah. they would definitely love to help you out in any possible way yeah let's move on to your job search because uh, that is very very important how how did you get your first job what was your strategy what were, did you have any internship or no i didn't have any internship <laughs> yeah uh, yeah and it's good because a lot of uh, students who might be watching this they might think that uh, if, you know without internship you might not get full time job and that's not true as uh, like yes you internships are great but it's not always everybody's not lucky to have an internship so yeah. in your case you did not have an internship so did you go back to india or uh, did you just no so actually uh, that's the story so it was like may before like uh, like our second semester was closing off uh, first thing what happened like i was trying to apply for a job like for general software engineering oh but yeah that didn't work and uh, i stopped doing that and then what happened, like professor called me and he said, like, I need a TA for my agile for summer semester. And I was like, okay, I'm ready to do it. And at the same time, he said, like, there is a guy in Hoboken that is looking for like an iOS developer. And would you like to work with him? Because And he said, like, I don't know him personally, but like someone known to me referred that guy. So I would say like, you can contact directly. So I talked to them and they they were like, we want a freelance developer who is local over here, work on iOS development. And I started working with them. And uh, that's how I started. And at that time, I didn't want to go to India because like I want to stay here and focus, like try to apply because I have seen people who got like internship in last month uh, in the vacation. Like May was empty, June was empty, July was empty. Like they got like internship in August as well. Like they were like keep focusing. So like one thing over here, I would say like to the students that don't focus on getting internship like early, like keep applying, keep working on your skills, keep giving interviews. You might get like internship by end of July as well. Yeah. And I, that might turn I, into your full-time job as well. So 
Yeah. Yeah. I think he meant, uh, you, you said it, don't focus it on early applying. I mean, you should focus on, focus up, on early, uh, applying but early, don't, but don't give up early. Yeah, go and give up. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> I, I understood what you were trying to say, but so yeah. I just wanted to clarify. So, okay, walk me through the timeline. So you did not obviously get internship and then... Yeah third semester fourth semester right you had four semesters uh, yeah but i finished in the third semester because i completed my masters in the third semester that saved me some money like uh, when it oh. comes to, like, the tuitions and so you everything. took extra courses in yeah okay so uh, about my journey so i was applying to the jobs and mm. i applied to a company in december and uh, i gave them interview i went for on site and uh, they were like we're going to give you like result in a week but it was like in december so december was like everybody was on holiday they didn't send me a response like for three weeks i was like hopeless that i should what i should do then i started apply because i was very uh, confident because my interview went really good in mm. that company and yeah. i was very confident so i like for one week i was like enjoying my time but <laughs> i didn't heard back from one week then i started applying again like over linkedin and glassdoor yeah. And uh, then uh, in January, like uh, before, just before, like one day before my birthday. So I heard them, heard from them and they were like, we're going to offer you the position. Like it was like almost like a month when I heard back. Wow. From them. Yeah. And so, and the company was flexible, like giving me like any start date I picked. So I gave them like February 5th. And then once I get the offer letter, I was like, then I was like spending my time, like with family and everything, like friends. Yeah, and February fifth was like my first start date, and I worked that uh, for that company for like around two and a half years. Mm, nice. Uh, so two years passed by. What happened? How Amazon happened? What What was this? What is the story behind Amazon? So before Amazon, I have to uh, tell the story about like Wicker. So two two and a half years, I was working mm. for this company, and like COVID hit, and. Uh, it was like a hard times, like the company had like pay cut and they had like a layoff as well. And I was like scared when I heard because like yeah. one of the team member from my team, specifically from mobile development, iOS team was laid off. And I was more scared because I was, since I was on H1B and I was like, uh, they might lay me off because the other person was like a, a citizen over here. Mm. So I was like more scared, but uh, luckily I was scared, but they had like a pay cut so we we like got a hit like when it comes to like money and that person. so at that time i like started looking for other jobs when i was uh, giving my interviews one of my co-workers from my previous company mm. who got laid at the time like when layoff happened he started working for a new company and uh, it was like three months after that like it was like in july he said there is an opening in this company and since i have worked with you and I know like how good you work. I, if you want, I can refer you over here. Nice. So they conducted my interview and they loved me and they offered me job right away. Like they called me in like 1 a.m. in night. They <laughs> said like, don't. Really? Yes. yes. Oh, yes. wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so they they must because, really want you to call you at like 1 in the morning. <laughs> yeah, because the thing was like, uh, I was interviewing like with other companies and I was expecting like offer letter from. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. other companies and they were very much interested and they were like we want to hire you and uh, we don't wait like just wait for one day and don't take any other offer and mm. they call like message me if you're awake we want to call you they gave me offer letter and uh, i started working from them in like august 2020 last year mm. and uh, i worked for that company and uh, what happened like in this june uh, I was planning to like, since my wife got admit like in Stevens in Boston and Stevens and in Northeastern. So we were like in Denima, like which one to choose because yeah. I was in Jersey and Stevens was, Steven was very near to us. And, right. but Northeastern has a great reputation and, and we wanted to go towards that. But I talked to my manager that we want to move to Boston. What can we do? But uh, he was like, I cannot give you a proper answer because I wasn't sure like why he was not giving. And then in June, by end of June, we come to know that we got acquired by Amazon. Oh. 
<laughs> nice. Uh, so, I, I mean, did you own the stocks for that company? Yes, I had like uh, a stock option. So my stock options got converted like... To I, Amazon? Yeah. Oh, this is so awesome. <laughs> that is so awesome. Uh, this This is a great story because now... I mean, obviously, I hope uh, you had like 50, 60 stocks. <laughs> yeah, so like that that was like the good thing because like uh, when I joined that company, I was not expecting to like get acquired or something because yeah. that company is like, uh, uh, and I start opted for that company because one of the reason like my co-work, old co-worker, he referred me and uh, he said that, and the team was small. So I had like more opportunity to like make my impact in the team and make my work impact uh, like the user base, like, and they were really good like user base and they had like lots of contracts going on, coming in and out. And uh, they, Amazon, like one of their enterprise user base, user mm, like, of mm, that company. Mm. And so Amazon was like very much interested in the company. So, and by in June, like we got- the So instead of being user. becoming a customer, they are like, we'll just buy you. <laughs> Yeah, so they acquired us. And so since June, like I'm a part of, still I'm working with the same team. Yeah. And we are working on same product, but we are now a part of like AWS, Amazon, and we are working over here. That is and, so cool. And yeah. the work we did was like so great that Amazon directly bought us. <laughs> I, I think that's usually the strategy for a lot of these big companies. Like uh, these smaller companies are basically selling it to, um, to, you know, to fan companies, right? And then fan companies like, okay, we already have this cost because we are yeah. buying it from the small companies. Uh, like instead of buying it, like let's look at this 10 years from now, we're going to spend $1 million or $2 million or $20 million. Why don't we just buy them entirely yeah. and absorb that as a cost? And now we don't have to pay that for the same services they were going to, you know, so that's usually how the strategy works when they do the merger and acquisition. Yeah. But I, I do that. This point reminds me for people to when when you do get hired, you will have options. There are companies who offer stock options and yeah. never say no to that uh, because yeah. because of this very reason. So I'm I'm guessing over here, and this is pure example. Uh, I'm not saying that that's what Akshay has in his bank account, <laughs> but let's say if if he had a stock options and he he did choose it, and he, if he had hundred stocks, uh, for example, right now when he Amazon bought it, those hundred got converted into Amazon stock. Uh, and 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 if you know what is the cost of one Amazon stock, which is roughly what is it right now? Three thousand five hundred. Three thousand something. Yeah, three thousand. Yeah, three. Something. Let's take three thousand dollars. So multiply three thousand by hundred. That is three hundred thousand yeah. <laughs> dollars. So and that makes a lot of difference. Yeah, it, it does totally, totally, and and it's. I mean, obviously, you're not going to be always lucky to find such companies who are going to get bought out and all of that. But my point is that uh, right when when you have the options to buy stocks and 401k, people might think that I'm not going to get a lot in my hand because I'm putting this into my investments. But that investments might grow. You don't even know. So yeah. so don't skip on those investments. Now that you are part of an interview committee, you hire iOS engineers. What are some of the most common interview questions uh, for iOS development? Few common interviews question and most important questions that most iOS developer being asked are like related to memory management, like how memory is managed in iOS, how concurrency or threading works in iOS. That is like one of the important questions that is being asked. And also like uh, you want to focus on like how, wh what is like pass by value, pass by reference, and uh, what is difference between structures and the classes, how those work, what the strategy behind that. And also you want to focus on like, uh, uh, like codable what are the basic like uh, basic fundamentals of ios development uh, and uh, also you might want to uh, focus on uh, things like databases like how core data works what is a core data stack looks like uh, manage object context persistent store container and all those stuff and also you might want to focus on like how what what is difference between like compact map map filter reduce sort 
all those inbuilt uh, APIs libraries which help you with data manipulation and uh, data conversion that that are like important questions and also like how does closure work what is the reference cycle how does that work how does uh, uh, ios manage like retain count what and uh, these are like some important questions that are like common uh, when uh, you interview for a ios developer role and uh, where can someone like is there a book or is there a website or is there anything which you would recommend for people to prepare for such interviews yeah so i uh, so i have like a lot of things that i have known so there are like youtube channels one with like one with like ios academy mm. which which they gave like live ios mentoring to tu- uh, tuitions and like if you have any questions you can ask them they might schedule a live session they might do it on youtube and mm. also there is like a hacking with swift that is also one great website that is helpful for me like they have like a lot of interview questions and also they cover a lot of and topics as soon as they come out like and uh, you can definitely follow ray vandelich they are like one of the best uh, in like mobile development they have like ios and android both uh, information they have le- lots of books they have lots of video tutorials they do have a subscription though so you might want to con- uh, look into that if you want to go for it or not but ios academy youtube channel is really good and also uh, there is a channel called Let- let's build that app they ha- also have like good ios development uh, tutorials if you want to follow and uh, like they teach you like all the good starting ways how you want to start the ios application development career nice okay and um going a little bit back uh, backwards uh, what so what are some of the most important skills uh, they should focus on uh, when you know working on ios development so one thing a uh, few things i would say like one would be like keep uh, keep your strong foundation of data structures like how data structures work and specifically like stack queues because and arrays set how these work and how they differ from each other and uh, next thing would be like focus on architecture because in ios application there are like different type of uh, design architectures like mvc mvvm and there are like viper ribs like uber use ribs so these architectures people don't know even like for me if i say myself like i wasn't aware about mvvm before i start started giving interviews for my second job so my wife told me about that and uh, mm. that's and so you should definitely be focused on that architecture part of the application as well because that is like one of the important aspect when it comes for i development part and apart from that i would focus on like learning like skills about like memory management is very important in ios because like since you are working on i uh, mobile application the resources are very limited mm. so you have to be more optimized when it comes to like using the memory resources because you don't want to like risk using like 100 gig, uh, one gigs <laughs> of memory and your application start crashing the other application and even your application itself and it will drain like you don't like when it comes to ios development like people don't know how much it impacts but like if you are working on an application you don't have a good memory management they will consume a lot of battery from battery. Your mobile device yeah. yeah yeah so you might want to focus on memory management and concurrency is also one of the important things mm. like because like you might want to like focus on asynchronous development rather than like just synchronizing and keep wait, user waiting till you fetch the data from the api that's not a good user experience yeah so these are the few skills i would definitely say like people focus should focus yeah. on i love listening to all this concept because this is what i do i mean i i talk to developers all the time and they talk about like oh we need to do this and <laughs> so <laughs> it's good for me to kind of listen to the same words and it's like awesome um what does your day look like as a iOS engineer at Amazon like what what does like from morning to evening what what do you do so in start like we have like a daily stand up we talk about like what we did yesterday and what we gonna do today and uh, apart from that like i usually have like meetings like uh, sprint planning sprint uh, backlog grooming and like uh, we have like a demo day like where we show off like what we did like in our previous sprint so my i would say like uh, rest of the my day like goes in like around 70% of my day goes in 
development part because like i'm more focused towards the development and rest 30% i would say like the meetings and calls about like how we want we're going to do this new feature and uh, about all that stuff estimating that and yeah uh, the scrum master is probably it. bothering you like hey where are you what is the status on this <laughs> yeah. and like stand up and all general calls like uh, what you going to do and planning and architecturing like a new feature that you going to be building and all that stuff like they like planning takes like uh, like 30% of time and everything and yeah. rest 70% is focused on like development and like sometimes uh, there are, we are developing new features and sometimes we are just fixing bugs and some days you might also like spend some like relaxing because you might not have like a lot of work like let's say like in these holiday season like you know, everybody like even the apple like takes like whole one week off so you are not going to releasing anything so you yeah. might just want to like relax the developers and want to focus on like uh, tech devs and everything all that type type yeah stuff. uh they, again this is awesome i i loved uh, so much and i learned so much from this interview as well so any final words of wisdom anything we missed uh, any word like words of encouragement for people so i would say don't de- get demotivated by anything i am like a average student i had backlog if i can come here and i can work in amazon so you can you so do you can do as well and uh, it's a journey so don't stop after like rese- rejections keep working yourself keep working on yourself keep improving and uh, keep learning that's the important part of the life and keep improving yourself even like if uh, not just from job perspective from studies or your personal life as well if you stop improving yourself you're going to be like tired and uh, there is no uh, future ahead of you so you might want to focus on learning improving talk to people communicate a lot and uh, keep making connections that's like important thing and people who are coming to us don't hesitate it's yes it's a big cost but once you get into the market once you start earning and once you get a job you will definitely be having a lot of ways a lot of doors will be open you can easily pay off all the loans and you can easily manage your expenses and everything is just like a, a hesitance of like coming out because if you come out then you, everything is open for you it's like a sky is no like as you just mentioned like yeah, the, the sky is like, limit yeah. sky is the limit so very very similar to what i say in my videos uh, don't give up on your dreams uh, i know i mean of course there is going to be rejections there's going to be you know uh, failures in 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 process and that's just a part of the process um, keep moving and keep hustling keep smiling which i say that also a lot <laughs> so <laughs> so basically that's 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 yeah i i 100% agree i forgot to ask you what is the salary range for ios engineers because i i think people will be like okay ye sab to theek hai bhai paisa kitna milega so what is the salary range for ios engineers so uh, one thing i would say like people should be very happy to hear that <laughs> ios developer can uh, like like for the fresher i would say like they can earn definitely start from like a 80k to 100k but like if you're experienced developer your salary might even go to like 170 180 depending on like how much experience you have yeah, yeah. so like it start like yeah so it's uh, like develop uh, mobile yeah. developers are so like I, i the friend i was talking about like in in there are other friends who are in samsung and other other big companies they make more than 200000 dollars yeah. <laughs> so one more thing i forgot to mention is that uh, akshay has a grid um, uh, behind the camera <laughs> get that uh, if we ever want to do live session with akshay talk uh, like you know ask questions and more in detail about ios uh, kind of other fun stuff about stevens and etc please let us know in the comment section so that way we can kind of schedule a live session if you are interested but i think that's it until our next one keep smiling keep hustling awesome <laughs>